I have to admit, I've reached the point in life where it takes quite a lot to excite me. However, I am excited by this product, which they're calling the BM2. Uh, and I think it stands for Battery Monitor 2. And if you go on Amazon, you'll see many similar things and they all look like clones of each other. Unfortunately, I can't show you this one just yet because there's a label, but we'll zoom in on the package. It looks like this, it's just a little box. You can see my finger for scale and two terminals that go on your battery and using Bluetooth apparently tell you the battery state. However, let's just go through and see these claims. Receive notification of battery conditions when enter Bluetooth range. I guess it's something that always runs on your phone and it's pinging them. Check your vehicle cranking system automatically while the engine is starting. I guess that allows you to see how much loads so when you're cranking it, how much your voltage drop is. Check your charging system, alternator. So you should be able to see that going up to 14 volts when your engine's running correctly. List the time of each driving. So clearly it's got some sort of logging function. Alert mobile if some data abnormal, which I would hope if your battery's low. I mean, my intention for this is to use it in a motorhome. Um, similar use cases I've had in the past though, where I've got a vehicle on my driveway that's slowly losing power um, and I wanted to track it and log it. If this has that range, that would help. But it says here, the data is stored in battery monitor for up to 31 days of out sync. So that's pretty cool. So even if you're not in immediate range, constantly, just going past the vehicle, it might be enough just to download it. Automatic synchronization, 12 volt batteries. Now, I do believe, I think one of these um, has different functions. So you'll notice, by the way, if you're on Amazon at the moment, they have something that looks very similar, which says it's got an average current, 15 milliamps, which I think is the quiescent current, the current it's using just sitting there. I think it could be a typo and they're just copying each other. I almost bought that second one to do a side by side but frankly how many of these bits of garbage do you need in your life? Input voltage 6 to 20 volts, minus 40 to 90, all the usual sorts of claims. Now the one on, uh, there's another one on the internet called like a BM6 or a BM4, just a different BM number. And I think it's a different manufacturer. So they're sort of up, trying to up the ante on each other saying there's a better. Uh, it's about the same sort of price. But that one claims to have temperature as well. So depending on what you're interested in, you might be able to get more stats. For me, I don't know if I was that interested about temperature because it's Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi. So you're going to be in your vehicle or near your vehicle and... Frankly, nearly all vehicles have a temperature monitor built in. So mm, unless you want to log that temperature, it's not that useful. So you can see it actually is just battery monitor too. And there's a picture, uh, maximizing battery performance and an actual manual showing the app. So that's a, all a bit of a surprise. But what I really want to do, the bit that I'm really interested when it comes to this is to understand how much current it uses when it's just sitting there. Because if it uses too much whilst it's hooked up to your battery, that's not really going to be much use to you because it's actually draining your battery. And by the way, just as a comment, these are great terminals. These are seriously chunky terminals. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I've got no problem with just hooking this directly to the battery. In fact, why are these terminals so chunky? This is really thick wire. It feels almost like the headphones on my titanium Aeropex. You can see it's actually just rigid. It's it's like a, I don't know if it's a wire in there or if it's literally just a solid piece. Very, very odd. Anyway, that will do the trick because it doesn't have to use much current just to read the voltage. So I'm going to set up a rig here so we can test it and see how much current it's drawing. So it's actually turned on here. I know you can't see the current it's drawing because that's on the bench power supply, but the bench power supply says 25 milliamps. So that's a whole 10 milliamps more than they claim. So what I'm going to do now is have a look on the app and see if I can get it registered on my phone. There we go. So the app is called BM2 by OneBaloo. Let's install the OneBaloo app. It's quite a reasonable 15 megabytes, so that's not bad in this day and age of bloatware. Welcome to the battery mod. Before you think, agree to the... Okay, agree. Do you want to send? Yes. Okay, local permission while using the app. Um, I'm guessing it probably wants it all the time because it wants to sit there passively. Bluetooth, allow. It's asking for a lot of permissions, but it makes sense. Whoa! So, select your battery type, a regular 12 volt lead acid battery, an AGM, which is a glass mat battery, or a custom. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just going to click custom just to see what happens. 
Um, oh, cool. So when you have custom, you can actually define your ranges for the voltage. That's super useful. So you probably could use it with a lithium cell. I think that would be actually fine. It did actually give a little warning there. Mm, anyway, I'm going to just OK with that. It's got your serial number and everything. So let's shut that down. Um, so it's saying basically it's low at 11.97 volts. So my multimeter is jumping. I so say my bench power supply is jumping between 11.99 and 12. So that does mm, kind of ring true. It could be just some losses on the wire. So now I've whacked it up to 12.19. And you can see it is actually re reacting in the corresponding manner. And it says it will work right up to 20 volts. So I'm gonna put it up to say 18 because I don't wanna necessarily blow it up. But yeah, you can see, oops, right there, before it zipped off the screen, that it was, it's gone <laughs> charging. Um, yeah, I don't know how you do that. Right, it's sussed. So yeah, 18.09 volts charging. And then as I turn the bench power supply down again, I'm going to just be above. Oops, I took it actually too low then. I took it to 5 volts. Oh yeah, look, it's so it's 5.7 on the bench power supply and 5.72 on there. That's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, it's not bad. I'm actually really kind of impressed with that already. For something that costs you about £20. Again, available even less money. Um, hmm. So let's see what you have. You have something called cranking test. And that's all about the cranking voltage, which I don't know how we're going to do that. I mean, let's. how do we do it? If I just pretend we're cranking? No. I mean, I, oh yeah, there you go. Low cranking voltage. So it's, it's just taking a measurement whilst you'd be cranking. So you just put it on that one. Charging test. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it down to 10 volts, or sorry, 11 volts. And then we're going to do high RPM test. I'm going to crank it up to sort of, there you go, 16.6. <laughs> it's kind of cute, isn't it? I mean, these are little tests that really are, are quite uh, interesting to do. And then there's a trip function, which I won't press because it probably brings up Google Maps. Um, but this is the main bit, and I think, frankly, that's all you need. I think that's brilliant. I probably ought to test it in a vehicle and see what kind of range I get. And I'm back. I got about 10 meters, maybe a little bit more. And I know it's probably difficult to see because the screen's a bit shiny, but in the corner, it has a little chain which shows you when you're connected to the device. And that turns into a red broken link when you are disconnected or out of range. And I noticed getting at least 10 meters through a couple of walls, which is great. But what's interesting, when it broke the link and I came nearer, it actually, uh, wait, I had to be nearer to it than 10 meters for it to reconnect. So I don't know if that's a feature of Bluetooth, if there's a power negotiation going on in BLE on these devices, but frankly, it's fine. Absolutely fine for what I need. Again, these aren't Wi-Fi, these aren't GSM, these aren't um, you know 5G or whatever that you're gonna get over the general broadband type network. They're a localized device that's Bluetooth. So the range on it is superb for its use case. You just have to be near the vehicle. Now, what I noticed was the app does run in the background and it does have um, warnings. So you can see here, abnormal cranking notification, power alarm, power 0%. So there are different warnings that did appear, probably went as a, as a result of when we were setting it up. Um, so that once your phone does communicate with the device, it does um, give you some of those alerts and notifications, which I think is, is pretty bloody useful. So all in all, um, will I recommend this? Absolutely, absolutely for the money. Um, it's great. And frankly, just think about it. If you need a voltmeter, yeah, that's in this range, 6 to 20 volts, which for automotive is most of it, you could probably use it as a semi kind of voltmeter. I mean, you could change these wires and actually put um, different type of clips on there that you could clip it directly to your battery or put a lighter socket um, connector on it and just plug that into your lighter socket. I think that's bloody cute. A bit of diagnostic equipment um, for a motorhome or camper or something like that. Absolutely indispensable as well as a sort of classic car, something you're leaving outside your house. The app says it can take multiple of them. I think I saw a number mentioned, which was four, but frankly, I'm, it probably is down to the stack. If I remember from BLE and my own BLE chipset experience, 
um, it's not really a limitation on the phone and things like that. It's a limitation on the Bluetooth stack to actually maintain simultaneous uh, Bluetooth uh, BLE connections. And I think once you start getting beyond four, it just starts to become unreliable. So that's probably why there's a limit in there. And I notice here, which is quite funny, the documentation actually says 10 meters. So huh, who knew it was about right? <laughs> So it's installed now. Basically, I chopped off the terminals and scraped out the wire. Interestingly, each of those cables actually had two wires in, but they're the same color cores. So I just stripped them and wrapped them together and installed them in just a handy terminal block that was connected to part of the battery loom. So I didn't even connect it directly to the battery. The device worked absolutely fine like that. Now, to answer the question we asked earlier, if you have got a 15 milliamp, or in this case, an actual 25 milliamp drawer, how long will this last in your vehicle? And the answer is, back of the fag packet calculation, 66 days. Now that is a far flung value from this average current 1.5 milliamp. So I don't know where they get this. Um, the only thing I could hope is that the Bluetooth goes to sleep after a while, but I suspect it doesn't. So 66 days is probably okay for most applications, especially if you've got them on trickle charger, um, certainly camper van things, you might have solar. So it's not even a problem. Uh, my use case for this is to actually monitor battery usage while it's not charging. So if you're using it for powering a power bank or an inverter or something like that, you might wanna see how much power you've got in there so that you can actually, well, like exactly like this use case on the uh, packet where you're just going to set an alarm because you really want to know when you're at 50% and 25% because you might want to reserve a bit of power for some other activity. Now, ironically, um, the other device that was uh, on eBay, I say eBay, uh, Amazon, which said it was 15 milliamps, which is cheaper than this at 17 pounds. If that was actually closer to the 15 or closer to the truth of its own literature, it would actually be more uh, economical to run, as in less power hungry than Battery Monitor 2. So hmm, they're probably all the same though internally, so take your chance. Please uh, comment down below and let me know uh, whatever. As ever, thank you for watching.